uh, if you will. And um, on the scene, all of a sudden, what was predominantly a male uh, service organization uh, comes a female. And I knew, I felt in my heart that not too many of the men can hold a candle to my technical prowess. Now here comes this female, I know that she's gotta be miles away from me and what happens? She comes in, she, almost instantly she becomes a supervisor and then a manager. And can I ask you this, because Flavia has said, I think this is really important, that the world of work has essentially always been an advantage to men. Tell, you are in the, you are a labor union leader. Is there any truth to what she says? Maybe there is some point at which men have some advantage in the workplace or not. What's your experience? Well, I think um, to a certain degree, but it's not that way any longer. Women college graduates outnumber men I almost like two to one now. Well, it's 60%. 60%, 60 percent. okay, very good. Graduates. They and outnumber them in the master's degrees right. too. So they're getting, they're getting the, the cream of the crop jobs. Uh, because of their education, and uh, because they're pretty to look at too, so uh, you know. And it's about time. It's <laughs> about time. Well, it's about time. So that about time the truth is what, you, what you're saying is that two wrongs make a right. I mean, you know, you know why Hitler went after the lefties and the Jews because he believed that they were responsible for World War One. So he figured he was going to have a second wrong to make a right. Let me, let, me, let me ask you, and I really think that, because I, it's really important, and you can comment on this, but here's, here's the, what I think is important about what you've done, okay? You went to court. You saw an unfairness. You used the form that was available, and you got nowhere. And I just want to say one thing right. to you and get your response, get all three of you to respond. I think to some extent, and I, I make this criticism with respect, I think to some extent you are harboring a little bit of a childhood fantasy. The fantasy being that, that we learned as children that in a democracy the courts are there to protect individuals. Well, not really, not so much. It seems to me, I'll give you an example. In 1954, the court in Brown versus Board of Education paved the way toward racial discrimination. Arguably, the Brooklyn Dodgers got there first. Arguably, Jackie Robinson had more to do than the justices in the court only acted after a certain public threshold was achieved. Okay, I think one of the things you're expecting the courts to do, Roy, is to do our work. We have not yet achieved among men and women enough public support to get the courts to do what you want. And you're going in there and getting nowhere, but I don't know that you can get anywhere in there. I agree with you. I feel, so what I, do we I, do? I, you know, I feel as if I'm Moochie fighting City Hall. But after I've gone through these courses, these cases, which I thought I could make a change, no, All no right, way. so what should we, so, you know, there's what do whole, we do? You know, what do like, we there's, do? There's a whole spectrum of things. I have a suggestion. That, there's a yeah. whole spectrum well, that people can do. Suggest a way in the way of When it comes to the ladies' night issue, yeah. why not work on a gentleman's night? And then make it, you know, one night a week, men don't have to pay and see how that works. Yeah. yeah. Well, well ladies', I know, ladies I night doesn't work anyway. I, yeah. It just brings in a bunch of guys. Yeah. Well, I agree, yeah. I agree but, with what you were saying. The, but question, I, the question yeah, is, what do, aside from Flavia's suggestion, right. which is a good suggestion, what do we do? But, well, well, being, the, being a lab, labor advocate, and I think the main ingredient would be education. And I try to do that on a daily basis of educating men about their rights, uh, uh, these particular rights and constitutional rights as well. And for the most part, most people are ignorant about their rights, period. And we have to educate them. Yeah, you know, he's right, but there's there's a whole spectrum of things that you can do. And I look at like it, what? I look at it from like four well, years ago. Give me the, okay, give me one, the one, one, is, one is you can, the analogy is writing letters, which today means you go on the internet, you send blogs. What he said as far as educate, uh, enlighten and elucidate. That's what you do. That's, That's what, what we this do. Show. That's Absolutely. what this show is. Right. He does. What he else? Does. What else? Demonstrations, civil disobedience, and then there is the third and fifth sentence yeah. to the Declaration of Independence, which says that when the government becomes abusive to your in unalienable rights, you have the obligation to overthrow that government. Right. The, the problem with, with demonstrations is this. You know, if we were to have a massive demonstration, okay? It would be me and John and you that's and Tony it. and yeah. and maybe Paul Young and, and I'm not really sure about, about Paul that, Young. All right. So the, the fact is that that that's not going to look too great in the front cover of the New York Times because you know we don't look all that impressive to tell you the truth. Okay. So so I don't know that that's going to work. Civil disobedience. 
That's an individual thing. That's an individual well, thing. I want to ask you this. Look at uh, Daniel, Daniel you know, and, and I want to ask you. Well, I want to ask you something about civil disobedience. I have a question, but I want to ask one other question first. It does seem to me that when you're conf when men look at the family courts, let's say, and they see a lot of imbalance, a lot of inequality, a lot of this is personal. A lot of this has to do with the personal or sexual imbalance of power that men and women have in relationships, it filters into the institutions of government. But then you go into the legal forum to challenge it legally. I'm not sure that it really is a legal problem, Roy. I think it's a more of a cultural kind of a problem. It's, it's, no, it's, it's, it's a legal problem if, if the judges, almost in 80 to 90 percent of the cases, give child custody to the mother. That's a legal problem because the legal the judicial system's doing it. If the husband, almost most in most of the cases, has to pay not only child support but hidden al alimony support, put in that child support, that's a legal. But problem. attacking it legislatively well, isn't working. It's not going. No, I I, but, I believe the only thing that's, that is going to work is eventually guys are going to wake up and they're going to try to overthrow the government. Right. I feel like this is creating but, more more difference between men and women instead of like. Seeing each other as equals and, and trying to bring us together, all this fuss is it's it's bringing us apart even further. Yeah, I think a reconciliation and an end of the gender war is a good idea. It's just that I'm not sure that that's going to work now either. I mean, it's a well, good I idea. I tell but you that I've educated myself, yeah. and I and I and I uh, stand victorious going through uh, the child protective services and going through a victory in my divorce and my separation. And most guys, uh, like myself, at first when things happen like that, you get emotionally involved and you just can't take it. But um, from being an activist my whole life, I educated myself and I got a very equitable divorce. And I actually was one of the few people that was able to win in like uh, child protective services and where they collect the money for the child support. Well, you got smart, and that's the key, right. and that's what we I tell men, myself. get smart. That's Basically. the way to do it. The smarter you are, the yeah. better change you are. Uh, one last question, because we have about a minute left. Right. You talked about civil disobedience. I picked this up at the post office. Men have to register with the draft. It comes back to that. We end the show how we started it, and the penalty for not registering is a, a fine $250,000 in prison up to five years. They lose their student financial aid, government employment, job Wonderful. training. Young men come to me and they ask me, what should I do? And in the one minute we have left on the show, I want you to tell me what I'm supposed to tell them to do about this. Call me up, we'll take it to the U.S. Supreme Court. Call you up. Or any other lawyer that does this kind of work. Take it to the U.S. Supreme Court. In 1979, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that that was constitutional. It's now time to revisit it, yes. given the change. Given the change, and I agree. Why, why it hasn't been revisited yet, I don't know. What do I tell them, John? Um, try to get an attorney that will work with you and try to go the pro se uh, route as much as you can. Uh, to help offset some of All the right. uh, expenses. We, we have to end the show here because we're absolutely out of time. It's been an important conversation, and I want to thank all of you for joining us. Roy Den Hollander, Flavia Prado, John Giambobbo, thank you all for an enlightening discussion. And, of course, we thank you for watching our program. For Men's Net, this is Mel Fight. We'll see you next time.